In today's travel episode, Gary and I visit Ueno Park and the famous Tokyo National Museum. We then pop down to Asakusa to take in the traditional atmosphere before hopping on a sightseeing boat that took us all the way down to modern Odaiba. That and so much more is coming up next. Good morning, guys. Today we are heading to Ueno Park, which is a gigantic park in Tokyo with a lot of museums and a lot of shrines and temples. Next to it is the area of Asakusa, which again is a lovely traditional district with temples and traditional houses. And that's where we'll be having lunch for boarding onto a river boat that will take us to Odaiba, which to the reverse of the morning is completely modern with Pallet Town and the Museum of Emerging Sciences. So again, a mix of the traditional and the modern. Really looking forward to this one. Which one should I get? This is probably the cutest breakfast I've ever had. I'm assuming the panda is because we're close to the zoo and obviously the main animal in the Tokyo Zoo is the panda, but I almost don't want to eat it. It's too cute. Behind me is the Kiyomizu Panando. Temple. and in it is a day to that to worship to if they want to get pregnant. The Kananda Shrine was actually originally built um, on the other side of the park, but in the 16th century it was taken apart and put in this location here. There's a temple on the water that we want to see. Up there? Yeah. We're also waiting to see it, don't we? Yeah, but I think we might want to pop into the temple first and then go to the museum so that we can then head to Asakusa. So, should we walk back through down to the water? Yeah, to and pretend to walk the temple. Yeah. Ueno Park is a large public park and the location of some of Tokyo's main shrines and museums. The park grounds originally belonged to Kaneji Temple, one of Tokyo's largest and wealthiest temples. In 1868, Kaneji was almost completely destroyed and the grounds converted into one of Japan's first western-style parks. Behind me is the Tento Shrine. The guy who owned the land actually created this man-made island with a shrine on top of it. The shrine then, several hundred years later, was destroyed. So the one that's behind us is actually not the original shrine, as are none of the shrines in this area. But it comes pretty close to what the original one was like. This shrine, as was the other one, are Buddhist shrines, rather than Ginto shrines that we visited previously. Many museums can be found in near Ueno Park, including the Tokyo National Museum, the National Museum of Western Art, the Tokyo Metropolitan Art Museum, and the National Science Museum. It is also home to Japan's first zoological garden, Ueno Zoo.
That must be the museum ahead of us. Behind me is the research and observatory building where you can find all sorts of books to do tree research on. This building here contains all the Japanese art which we will be heading to afterwards. Art. Right now Gary is pretty upset because the archaeology bit of this museum, which is the main one in Tokyo, is shut until October 2015 for renovations. And that's the bit that Gary really wanted to see, so a bit disappointed right now, right? Yeah. Um, so we'll be heading to the bit of Japanese art right now, and then making up for it in the modern part of Tokyo, having lots of fun with vending machines or whatever they're called. Are they called? Uh, arcades. In the arcades. Today and tomorrow. The Tokyo National Museum is Japan's oldest and largest national museum. The Tokyo National Museum is a large museum complex with six different buildings, each one large enough to be considered a museum by itself. If you're following my suggested itinerary, you will probably only have time to visit the main exhibition in the Hongkan building. Its permanent exhibition features a very large and beautiful collection of Japanese art and archaeological artefacts. In addition, the museum holds regular special exhibitions. That was amazing, mind-blowing and way too short again. You could actually spend a whole day in each of these areas. Fortunately, we just don't have the time for that. Really insightful. We did mostly in the top floor and just basically skimmed over the second floor. But come here, it's worth it. Now we're heading to Asakusa, which is right next to Moreno Park and is one of Tokyo's low cities, so one of the more traditional cities with traditional buildings that still has the atmosphere of old Tokyo. There you can actually eat, there are loads of shops, you can take a rickshaw ride around the area for about 9,000 yen, which we won't be doing, and the main attraction is the Senzohi Temple, one of the main temples in Tokyo. And you walk up the Nakamesi Road to the temple, which is lined with little eateries. If you have a bit more time in Tokyo, then you might want to go to the Natural History Museum, which is right there, right next to the National Art Museum. Ueno Park is actually really close to the Sky Tree, so you could combine Ueno with visiting the Sky Tree, which we did today over there. We just got out at Asakusa Station, and we're now heading to Kaminaramon to have lunch. You can take a ride on a rickshaw through Asakusa and it costs something between 7,000 yen and 9,000 yen for two people. I think it's 3,000 yen if you're just one person. But we might as well explore the area by foot. Asakusa has an amazing atmosphere and will transport you back to old Tokyo. Nakamizidori is a popular shopping district. Nakamizidori is definitely a cute souvenir central where you can buy anything from a keychain to a kimono. Stalls selling masks, souvenirs, foods, clothing, accessories, etc. line both sides of the 200 meter street. Street food culture is less prevalent in Japan compared to other Asian countries. However, Asakusa is filled with food stores selling snacks that are definitely worth trying. Mm, some sort of um, 
mashed up meat and deep fried. I'm not sure if it has rice around it or not. So I got a sweet potato cake and then these sweet potato donutty things with syrup and sesame seeds. It's all sweet potatoes. And I got this fish donut and they make them directly in front of you. Mine's filled with cream. Gary's is filled with green tea, isn't it? Yeah. Kami Mari Mon is a good place to head if you're looking to grab a bite to eat for lunch. So much choice here, but you can't help but find something to eat. Now we're heading up Takeshita Dori to uh, the Sensoku the main shrine here in this area uh, before heading to Kodaira. The main attraction of the area has to be Senzoku, an incredible famous Buddhist temple. A temple is approached via Nakamizi. Start at the Kamimari Mon, Thunder God Gate, which serves as an entryway to Senzoku grounds. It might be one of the busiest spots in Asakusa, with endless streams of tourists trying to get a clear shot of the gate and selfies. Most Japanese stop at the huge bronze incense burner in front of the main hall to bathe their hands and face in the smoke believed to ward off illnesses, before climbing the stairs to offer their prayers. Make sure you walk around the grounds to admire the shrine from all angles. This temple, I say it all the time, but amazing, completely in all. Uh, not sure which one is my favourite at the moment, the one in Hakone near the water, or this one. Definitely don't have temple fatigue yet, you. We just bought a ticket for the riverboat, which is going to take us to Odaiba. It's in an hour. If you do this, you might want to book your riverboat before you head into Azakusa, because the wait can be up to an hour, which is the case for us, and that way you can take the boat directly once you're done with Azakusa. And? When you have had your fill of Asakusa, head to the river and board one of the sightseeing boats. Located in the bay and crisscrossed by rivers, Tokyo has several ferry companies. A ride on a water bus always makes an enjoyable alternative to the crowded underground. The most popular route has to be Asakusa Odaiba Direct Line. A 50 minute ride from Asakusa to Odaiba in a very boldly designed Himiko boat with panoramic windows. Just arrived in Odaiba, which is a modern island with the Sega Park and theme parks and the big wheel and the whole thing is really modern. Oh, and Pallet Town as well. Gary's super excited, though he doesn't show up very much. So trying to find the wheel. It's not easy for such a big structure, but I think we're heading there now. Everything seems to be on ramps and up in the sky and yeah. Odd. From the traditional to the modern, Odaiba is a popular, highly modern shopping and entertainment district on a man-made island in Tokyo Bay. Modern city planning provides Odaiba with plenty of green space and a very pleasant division between vehicular and pedestrian traffic. All pedestrian walkways are elevated above the traffic below. All the man-made islands in the bay are connected with the elevated Yurikamome train line, not dissimilar to the DLR in Canary Wharf. I would suggest you head to Pallet Town for some fun on the ferry wheels and the massive arcade before sitting down for dinner in Aqua City. They're so cute, get me one. watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new.